Hi everyone and welcome back to Datafile. Um, today I'm very excited. We're going to go through the highlights of Julia 1.6 and basically what's new in the version and how it's going to improve our life as Julia developers. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's move to the Julia website here. I'm gonna make this link available in, in the description so you can check it out. Um, and this is the blog, this is Julia's blog, this is Julia's website. Um, and you can see over here, they, so if I go to the, to the blog list, they have a couple blogs dating back from a while ago. Uh, this is the latest one as of today. And here are all of the new things which are brought to life in Julia 1.6. Um, so Julia 1.6 might be the new long-term stable, which is kind of a big deal, so meaning that this is the one we may be using for a while. It's not just some version that they're gonna throw away uh, very soon. Okay, so let's dive into the, the new features. You can read the whole thing if you're interested. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. Um, here they mentioned that uh, they're not sure whether 1.6 or 1.7 is going to be the new LTS. Uh, okay, well basically, so just a, an, over, an overall view on Julia 1.6. Um, what they improved the most is speed, speed, speed. Uh, and this is great, especially for a first time run, because we had this problem, as I mentioned in previous videos, that the first time you run a cell in Julia, it's going to take a while and they did their best to reduce it as much as possible. Obviously, they're gonna do more changes in order to make it even better, but as of today, uh, there is quite a substantial difference with before this version already. Okay, so parallel pre-compilation. Um, so the, the whole idea of this thing is that you're trying to import packages as fast as possible, uh, because I believe uh, differential equation is a pretty heavy package, but I haven't used it myself, so I can't say for sure. But Basically, packages which take quite some time are a problem, and obviously Julia team want to reduce that time. So here, what uh, they also in included this thing, this new animation, and we're gonna see it uh, here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that video, uh, so you can see what's going on. So you see they're they're adding adding this images package, and here you have the progress as you're downloading the package, which is. Which is great. It's nice to see that everything is going is fine, is going fine, and as expected. Um, and yeah, this I experienced myself when I installed Julia 1.6. Um, you can you see the the dependencies coming in and coming out, and it's it's really nice not to just have that black box. Um, Python, for instance, if you install uh, things from Jupyter Notebook with the pip install, you get just a black box. You know that the cell is running, hopefully it's installing, but you're not sure. Even though you don't get an error, sometimes things might happen. So it's just, yeah, it's really nice to get to get this animation and you see here, they're using images and it loaded pretty quick and now they have access to this package. Um, so that's great, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm very happy about that. It's a, it's a nice, cool feature. Obviously it's not gonna, it's not gonna revolutionize uh, coding, but, but it's just a nice feature to, to know what's going on. Uh, compile time per percentage. So here, that's, a, that's maybe not as important, I would say. They include the compilation time when you talk about the runtime. So they use this uh, time and time verbose things to, to measure the time that running code takes. Eliminating needless recompilation, which is great. Um, basically, you use some code and then you reuse the same code later. And depending on when you use that code in the past, um, Julia is gonna sometimes throw it away too much and it shouldn't throw it away as much as, as it does. Uh, and they're trying to fix that here. They're trying to uh, make it so that if you use code and you still need it at some point in the future, Julia is not throwing it away, so it's going to be able to reuse it to gain some speed in the future, um, in the future runs of, of codes. For instance, in Jupyter Notebooks, um, if you have many cells and you want to run the third cell, but the first cell has some codes which you still need, uh, instead of Julia having to recompile and redo the run of the first cell under the hood, um, it's going to be way faster and, and it's going to keep those codes in, in, in memory or it's gonna be able to reuse them. Um, 
compared to latency reduction. So all of these are, are kind of achieving the same purpose. I'm just going to go quickly through those uh, tooling to help optimize packages for latency. So you see this one word which comes all the time is latency and it's obviously related to speed. Uh, loading speed ups, binary loading speed ups. So they understood the problem. They understood that they have this community of developers and these people are used to Python, they're used to other languages, or maybe they're just starting on the language, but they don't want to take too much time to run their code and they, they just want to have things being done quick because in Python and in R and in other languages, that's how it happens. Um, so they don't want to spend one minute in importing a package if Python can do it in five seconds, obviously. So if Julia wants to compete, it's gonna have to do that. And I'm very happy that they put the accent on this because the first um, run time being huge, I mean, personally, I'm taking the hit because I'm all for Julia and I, I love the language no matter what, but I can understand that someone who's a newcomer to the language would not be happy with, with waiting one minute for the first run to, to happen. That's if you have Python doing it in five seconds, it's it's not acceptable. Um, anyway, this is a this is a nice graph. I think um, they're measuring whatever G T K three whatever. Um, I don't personally know this. I guess the package. Um, anyway, what's important is uh, so this is, these are the versions: version one point three, one point four, one point five, one point six, and they're measuring the time that this this thing, whatever it is, uh, takes. And you can obviously th see that things are, are going down. So initially we had the blue curve with those old wrappers and they included some new wrappers, which I may have missed. Uh, it's part of the binary loading speedups, uh, I guess. And um, they included some new JLL wrappers, whatever they are. Uh, anyway, bottom line for, for anyone using Julia and uh, who doesn't know those things under the hood, is that speed is going up, so time ta time taken is going down, and it's going down it's going down really s significantly. Like we used to have six or seven seconds to to load that package just like a couple like three versions ago, and as of today, it's it's almost instantaneous. So this is insane. Uh, I'm very happy that they made those changes, and I, I don't personally understand all of the things happening under the hood, but Whatever it is, if, if you can reduce the time taken by wh whatever it is, like 30, 30 X, well, I am all for it. So I don't know how they do that. I, I'm not familiar with the computer science uh, technical things going on uh, in, in the Judah repos, but I'm very happy about that. And I wanted to report to you so that you have an idea of, of how fast things are changing because they they're talking, I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna show you later, but they're talking about uh, the next version being in a month. So I don't know if they had that timeline as well for the previous versions, but if that's the case, it's gonna, it's absolutely burnkers. Um, yeah, downloads and networking options um, by Stefan Karpinski. Uh, by the way, there's a bit of drama going on on Reddit. I don't know if you, if you saw that, but it's uh, on, the, on the subreddit of Julia, there's a, a little bit of drama with like, some guy insulting uh, Stefan Karpinski and and yeah the whole community crushing this guy so I'm very happy about the community as well on, on the subreddit of Julia if you haven't seen it you should check it out it's a uh, it's a beautiful community uh, people are helping each other it's a small community it's it's kind of the birth of Julia still even though the language wasn't created yesterday but uh, it's still pretty new and uh, and the community is small and still beautiful I hope we're gonna be able to keep it that way Anyway, that was a side story, but yeah, uh, you can see that you can tell that they really understand the the problems. It's slow, it's inconsistent, it's inf inflexible. They, I think, they're really listening to their community, and you can also show that because uh, they report uh, GitHub issues. Um, so GitHub issues, I don't know if, if you're familiar with that, but basically, you have people going on the Julia repository and saying, "Okay, I have this problem. I would like to." I would like this bug to be fixed, uh, or they could say, okay, I have this idea of new feature, could you guys do that, is it possible? And basically you have the, the actual people who work on the Julia project who, uh, who try to change those things which people are not happy with. Uh, that's one possibility. Another possibility is that 
um, someone says, okay, I have, I have this issue, uh, could anyone fix it? And it can also be anyone from the community, from the Julia community, which I talked about before. And just someone coming and saying, hey, I've got this bug, uh, this, this fix, I think it's, it fixed your bug. And you ask it to be included in the new code. And, uh, and so that it fixes this bug for everyone, not just, not just you and your machine who managed to fix it. Uh, so this is the whole idea of open source. It's a very beautiful thing. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you can. It's be careful. It's addictive. Um, you just start with it, and and after a while, you anything not open source, you start having bad thoughts about it because it's the whole idea of uh, free and open source. Sorry, free and open source software is uh, is is really beautiful. Anyway, um, talking about that, they have this uh, CI robustness. So it, it's actually pretty related to that. Um, so basically they, they had uh, tests. So anytime someone makes this kind of changes uh, on the code, so they say, yeah, hey, I've got this uh, code, it fixes uh, whatever. Uh, they have to make it run through a couple tests to make sure that it's not breaking the whole system because you don't want to fix one bug and then break everything else, right? So that's what they had, uh, that's the problem they had. So CI stands for uh, continuous integration, you can, you can see here. Um, and basically they, they had a couple uh, tests to make sure that everything was working fine with the new code, which was included. In, and, and some of these tests, if I understood correctly, some of these tests always failed. So now they're, uh, if I understood correctly, they're trying to um, change the tests or make it so that the, the code can the, the review of the code in order to include it in, in, the, in the whole Julia code, uh, this review is, is going to be made, um, if not easier, at least, at least better. They're trying to improve those things. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously, if, if we can have better review of code, it means we can have people including more code, which maybe was not classified properly before. So maybe they were saying, nope, sorry, the code doesn't pass this, this test and it should have passed uh, the test and be included, or the other way around. So overall, good testing is also uh, part of the, of the developing process. And only with good testing can you, can you have efficient contributions from the community. Um, what else we got? Uh, improved stack trace of, uh, formatting. So yeah, uh, this, is, this is ugly, right? I mean, you don't really know what's going on. Uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of the, the code you see in your, in your shell, in your terminal but it doesn't, I mean, to me, it wouldn't mean much. Um, and this is the new trace. So you can see here, old stack trace, and this is the new stack trace. Um, and I mean, it's just way clearer, right? It's so much more beautiful. Um, for, for me, as someone outside of this, uh, uh, like, computer science community, because I, I'm a mathematician, uh, this is way cleaner. Uh, this, I can start wondering what's going on and, and look into my errors and try to, to fix those errors. Uh, before that, it was, it's not as clear. I mean, if you've got this, you're not, you're not going to dive into it, right? I mean, personally, it doesn't make me want to dive into that. It's, it's, it's not clear. It's kind of a mess. Um, and yeah, this is, this is way easier to dive in. Uh, hopefully they, they, I don't know if this new version of Julia is going to improve that, but hopefully they're going to improve the, um, the errors they throw because sometimes I'm gonna say they're not great. Um, you have errors and it's just telling you, eh, this is not working and, I'm, and you don't really know what to fix. And hopefully they're gonna change that because, because it's really hard to debug your code if, if you don't have the proper errors being thrown. Um, so hopefully this fixes this issue as well. I don't know if it goes that deep or if, uh, I hope it's not just the, the formatting and the the prettiness of the, the error thrown, uh, but yeah, we shall see. Only only after coding, only after testing out the code, you can you can decide whether you think that uh, the errors are, are good or bad, um, and if they actually give you information about what the error is. Um, okay, yeah. So yeah, it seems it seems like they're actually doing that. Argument names and methods are now shown, which is great. Uh, if you don't even know which method you has an error, that's impossible to debug. Uh, the function name was made uh, to be more emphasized. Yes, yes. So this is probably just some formatting uh, things, which is great. Um, obviously, it's it's helping you through your 
developing process and and through your coding in general. So that's that's awesome. Uh, the modules were the modules where the method is defined is now shown. That's great. Just basically just give me more information. That's all I want. Um, and anything going in that direction, like those things, which seem to be that, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, and please enjoy the release. That's probably the most important phrase, right? <laughs> so, and and yeah, let us know. So they're very open to to uh, new ideas and and just people contributing and and telling them what's going on and what's not working. Uh, so with that, we're gonna we're gonna bring the video to a close. Um, thank you for for uh, for watching it. If uh, you have any any comment, anything I missed. Um, you can you can let me know in the comments. Um, if you if you haven't already, you can subscribe. You can like the video. That would be that would be awesome. And uh, with that, I uh, will see you next time. Thanks for joining.